Welcome to this care collab, my contribution to the care of Paphiopedalum delanatii. I am here to update you on mine, so thank you very much to Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents for organizing this care collab. I am really happy to be here because, well, look at my delanatii. She's still with me, she's still alive. The other channels that are participating, their video links will be in my description. So if my setup is something that you would rather not get into with regards to if you want to care for your Delanatii, change the setup of your Delanatii, or buy a Delanatii, then there's many more environments and many more setups that may be more to your preference, your grow method, and your environment. Now here I am in southern Spain on a very cold day, bringing out my Delanatii to film her because normally she lives indoors all year round. The last time we saw her, she was being repotted and I put a layer of Akadama on the surface of the Leka because if everything goes well, they will grow roots and start pushing themselves out of their pot. You can see mine is lower in the pot because instead of me lifting the orchid out and then repotting her back lower into the pot, I was kind of anticipating that if she's going to push herself out of the pot, all I'm going to do is just occasionally keep adding media around the surface. This way I don't disturb her. And so far the plan is working. But look at this. Can you see that root down there? I'm very loath to move it around too much. You see how it comes out of that stem there? Meaning we are going to be adding some Akadama just to cover that root. I do like how it's going nicely into the pot. But once this cold and humid climate is gone, and I hope in a couple of weeks, it will just be a distant memory. I don't want that root exposed to the ambient air and die on me. So, Akadama, here we go. Now, Akadama is extremely wicking. So all I'm gonna do now is just add the top layer. You can see dry Akadama in contrast to the wet Akadama. I will not be watering this Akadama in because I am going quite close to the base of the orchid and if it wicks up anything that is residual from the other wet Akadama, that's great, it can do that. But personally, in these conditions, I am not putting any water on the surface of this orchid. Now, recently I did soak the pot in just plain RO water because, you know, I don't want my microfiber to go dry. So this is fresh water which I do every third or fourth day during this time of year. But at least, at least every two weeks or so, I am soaking the pot with fresh water and letting it drain out. Even though I'm in inorganic media, the major part of this pot is filled with leka. Only the surface is Akadama. Paphiopedalums want to have an evenly moist climate around their roots. You don't want them to get too dry. So right now, with the temperatures being colder, I am soaking the pot. I am not flushing. The soak is my flush because I do not want any water to creep into these tight spaces and ruin the chance of me seeing this little Delinati I bloom, seeing as she's never bloomed for me. I got her as a teeny tiny little seedling. I've lost the seedling leaves. She's been repotted once and she's growing more leaves. Very, very slowly, of course, but yeah. Any tiny mistake with getting water into those crevices and the last three years will be out the window and so will my little Delanatii and I really would like to try avoid that. So I think I've covered every root with the Akadama that I could see, but you see where I'm getting at. The idea being lower in the pot and then let her raise herself out of the pot and I just keep filling around with media in the hopes that one day she will bloom for me in the meantime. I am enjoying some very gorgeous foliage. I am not fertilizing her at all, and I haven't done so since the potting up video. I have learned my lesson that the slow growing orchids do not like a lot of fertilizer, no matter what climate I'm in. <laughs> Just because it's warmer here sometimes doesn't mean she grows any faster. So there's been no fertilizer for this orchid. My intention, of course, is that come spring, I will give her a calcium magnesium soak at 30 parts per million, maybe even less just to be on the safe side. And I will give her a fertilizer soak at 50 parts per million. And that'll be it for the rest of the year. <laughs> I hope this was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed the update that you could see from the potting up video, which I will link in the description to now how she has progressed. The system is working really well for me at this point in time. 
Really appreciate being able to take part in this care collab. Thank you very much, Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents. And if you are growing Paphiopedalum delinati, if you are not part of the care collabs, if you would like to join in with future videos, please head over to Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents or leave me a comment and I will pass the message on either way. Let us know that you're interested to join in on future videos. Consider yourself welcome to the Care Collab crew. I really appreciate that you watched my video. Thank you so much for your time. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.